All right, guys, we've got a full house today. I love it. I love it. Uh, as Coach Beamer always starts with, uh, good luck to the women's basketball team uh, up in Minneapolis. Uh, we'll certainly, uh, as, a, as a university, be cheering them on and uh, wish them the best of luck. I'll open it up. Greg, thanks for doing this. I guess just for starters, what did you learn about this group last year, the ups and downs of last season, and where do you feel like this group is now coming off of what last year was? Right, it's a great question. I think I think the big that is that is right. There was some ups and downs. You know, uh, the consistency up front throughout the season wasn't good. But I think as the season moved on, I think you you saw some progression and more consistency. And you know, so far in in uh, was, today was day eight, day eight of spring practice. I think that's the biggest thing that you see the difference in is the consistency level out there. Uh, I think again, it's been a year in the system, a year around me, uh, and a year playing beside each other. Um, I think is the difference right now, and uh, certainly the, their attitude and everything has been a, a work in progress, and they've done a nice job here so far in spring practice. Greg, I know we hear a lot about continuity on the offensive line and how much that matters. I mean, I guess just in practice, how much has that mattered for y'all at least so far through spring and having, you know, what, six, seven, eight guys who played snaps last year back and, and in the fold again? Yeah, I, again, it goes back. I mean, the thing about offensive line play is there's so many different things that can happen you know, on a play, right? And knowing, knowing the guy beside you knows exactly what his reaction should be um, if something happens. Right, like a movement in the defense, a pressure, or whatever it might be, and it's understanding the scheme also. And then it comes back to the first question: it's all about continuity and having guys playing and communicating beside each other uh, on a daily basis. And so far, we've been able to have that consistency here in spring practice because the same guys have been practicing. Uh, we've had everybody out there and and uh, available to us. a lot of young guys last year got in for you, especially later in the year. Just how much can that benefit a, a Tyshawn or, or somebody else in terms of getting reps and then channeling that over into spring? Well, I think what it does is it creates competition, right? Uh, anytime you're able to play multiple players and they had meaningful reps and so forth and so on, it builds their confidence, number one. But number two, it creates competition within the group. Now you have maybe eight, nine, ten guys who potentially could get in a game. Uh, the guy that, you know, um, Trey Jones, just by his role that he played for us last year, which was a significant role. Uh, he didn't play a ton of plays, but when he played, they were meaningful plays. Just the confidence that he gained from that in the fall by playing has translated to confidence of playing offensive guard here in spring. A uh, guy that's really made some strides, in my opinion, as, as an offensive lineman here in spring. Uh, just because of playing a little bit for us in the fall. Obviously, Wanamaker, same thing. I mean, well, Wani ended up playing a lot more than, you know, we were anticipating him playing uh, last year. But the reps that he continued to get throughout the year, again, has paid off for him here in the spring. Because going into the season last year, he was a guy that I wasn't sure that was kind of, and he kept getting better and inching and inching and inching and inching. And obviously, he had some ups and downs. But at the end of the day, he kept inching and getting better uh, as the season went on, and uh, plays with great energy, great pride, um, and uh, I, I like him. And <clears throat> sticking with Tyshawn, uh, I, I think coming in, the expectation was for us, and maybe the, the previous staff was he might be an interior guy. Uh, is, does that match up with, with what y'all thought coming in and, and him playing more tackle? Well, he, 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 his measurables may not say he's a tackle because he's not 6'6". Six, six. But he has length. He has good arm length. He has good strike ability. And he has a great feet. So it allows him to play on the edge. And you guys probably don't remember, but a guy named Aaron Sears that played at Tennessee uh, when I coached him at Tennessee, very similar build. A kid that you thought when you recruited him is going to be an interior player, but had great length and had great feet. And he kind of reminds me of him in a lot of different ways. And uh, But yeah, ultimately, we'll, we'll figure all that stuff out as it goes. I mean, obviously, he's playing some tackle for us now. He's played a little bit of guard here in spring, um, which is good. And, uh, you, know, it's, you know, he is a guy that uh, certainly we, we want to continue to develop. He's not arrived by no, but by no stretch. But uh, he's learning the game on a daily basis, and I like his approach so far this spring. 
Greg, obviously there was you know a lot of criticism about the, the offensive line last year, whether that was you or the guys playing or whatever. I mean, I think Javon and Eric have both said, you know, at some point they just wanted to play well and get over it and move on and, and sort of just put it on tape and then we're kind of tired of hearing it. I guess just as a group, how did you guys kind of take to that? What, what kind of went into sort of moving past that, ignoring that? And, and I guess what's that been like, at least now, you know, having a, another spring and moving forward as well? I, 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 it goes back to the very first time I talked to you guys. It's about developing development, development, development. I told you that we had guys that had some experience, but it was going to be a new voice. It was going to be a new offense. And it was going to be growing pains. What I didn't like was the ups and downs. That, to me, was the, the thing that, as a group and as their coach, that uh, you know, that's what we have to eliminate, those huge mistakes uh, that we, we made at times throughout the year. And, and uh, so that, that's to me, was the thing that they're disappointed, as long as, and so is the coach. They saw the inches we were taking throughout the year, all right? And uh, as long as they can see improvement and they can see themselves improving and they still believe in the message and the offense and what we're doing, we're going to be fine as long as we keep inching forward and you're still hungry to, to, to get better on a daily basis. Zach came in here and talked about a lot of the pressure issues can be helped by bringing in a, a quarterback with a little bit of experience, getting more experience at running back. How much can having Eric back in the system for a second year to call out these protections and getting a guy like Spencer and CBS in here really help clean up some of that protection? It's, it's a little bit of everybody, as it, as it always is, each and every year. I mean, obviously, I mean, we played four different quarterbacks last year. Um, uh, we, we didn't anticipate Tyshawn Wanamaker playing as much as he did. Um, but – you know, it all goes hand in hand. It goes with the O-line, the quarterback, the receivers getting off press, the backs picking up blocks. But ultimately, we are in charge of that, of the O-line and the quarterback to set the protections, make sure everybody's on the same page. And uh, so far, so good this, this spring. I'm Dylan and Jakai, a couple guys who, who had to deal with some injuries last year at various points. Where are they at? And, and how do you see them kind of progressing into this year? I, right now, Ja'Kai looks better than any time when I've had him at all last year. Uh, obviously, coming off an injury um, really hampered his lower, lower body development last year. And uh, you can see that he has gained not – I wouldn't say he's fully back to strength with his lower body, uh, but you can see the confidence starting to come, particularly the last couple practices – I see a little confidence building back in Jakai of his ability to play. Uh, Dylan has done a lot of things, just not a lot of contact. Uh, he's out there on a daily basis, going through his footwork, going through his hand, hand, hand strike against air, so to speak. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to edge him back in maybe by the end of the spring practice. Uh, but uh, as long as he continues to work and stay in tune, which he's been very engaged in meetings and when he's out there doing his individual work, he, I see he's engaged, trying to get better. And uh, I'll be excited to get him back into the fold. You signed three guys in this 2022 class, I think, in um, Grayson, Kaysen, and, and Brew there. Just what do you like about those guys, and how much do you think they'll be able to help you either this year or into the future? Well, I mean, obviously, I hadn't coached them a day. So that's, that's going to be you know, down the road. As we all know, it's very difficult to play as a freshman in the offensive line, the physicality, uh, but you can do it, all right? And I've always said, you know, obviously the best guys are going to play. If they fit into that mold, then they're going to play. Um, I really like all three of them's makeup. I like their background. I like their families. I like their tough guys. They love football. They're really good students. You know, everything, their communication skills are off the charts, you know, in terms of coach to player already. Uh, it just in terms of them together as a group, them three uh, communicating, uh, along with Jackson Hall, who's already here as a, as a walk-on, which is doing a nice job for us. I like his attitude, the way he's approached things. And, uh, but all three of those kids uh, have a little bit different skill set. Uh, they're probably all a little bit different coming out of high schools based upon the offenses they played in. Um, so I'll be anxious to see them, obviously, when they get here in the summertime and and you're able to work with them and communicate with them more from a football standpoint and, and see where their skill set goes. And we'll be able to determine that a little bit later, probably in the middle of August somewhere. Greg, I got to ask on Brew. I guess when's the last time you had a recruit that was an offensive lineman that was also a, a 
pretty legit swimmer as well. And I guess uh, what I guess what does that maybe speak to a little bit about his athleticism as well? Well, I mean, I I think it was said, you know, whether it was the uh, when we signed him or whatever, but it was the first thing that caught our eyes as coaches when I first got here last year. About you know somewhere about in this time last year was the first time I had watched him, and uh, and the very first thing and guess it, his mom. His mom is the one that put his huddle film together. I found this out as the process was going on. The dad, you know, played at Penn State. And dad's, no, nah, you don't need to put that on there. They'll think, they'll think you're weird or whatever. And his mom said, no, this is going to show his athleticism, his toughness, his competitiveness. And it did. I mean, the very first thing on his huddle film was swimming highlights. And it caught my eye. And I thought it was pretty amazing. And then as the, obviously, his film, you know, turned on from a football standpoint, actually, I believe it was, had him running a 400 meter after that in a big man relay from the track team. This guy's a competitive in everything he does. He goes football to swimming, which we all know how tough that is, right into track. This guy's a nonstop guy, uh, highly motivated to be the best he can be on and off the field. Uh, we'll, I'll be anxious to see what he's, you know, he's going to probably be a little behind from a pass pro standpoint based upon the offense that he played in, but I know that his dad is working with him on a daily basis because he's doing football and track right now from a training standpoint. Uh, and if you could just touch on your, your, I guess, first group of interior guys, Eric and Javon in particular, I guess, Vershawn from, from what we've seen, uh, three guys who've played a ton since they've been here. Can you kind of speak to, to where they're at as a group and, and how nice it is to have uh, a well, certainly, I'm glad they're back. I mean, you know, obviously, with Eric and, and Javon, uh, and, of course, Vershawn has a couple more years left. Uh, Vershawn's a, another guy that really wasn't planning on playing as much as he played last year, right? Then we made some switches with the tackle position and kind of got him in there because he was a guy that kept going a little bit early in the season last year, and you could see he was getting better. And uh, I see, it, uh, again, I see another guy right now that's playing with some confidence. You, know, you could tell he's been in the – in the SEC, he's played, uh, uh, and his communication has gotten better. Eric, Eric, number one is his brain. I mean, he is one of the smartest players I've ever coached. He has changed his body this off season. So the dedication to me that Eric has put forward was in the off season because he changed his body. Even after being here for five years, he changed his body even more. So to me, he's more fit than he's ever been. He's a little more flexible than he's ever been, and his communication still, skills are still off the charts. Javon, um, quiet, quiet guy, as we all know. You guys had an opportunity to talk to him in the past. He leads by example. He, he, he's the same guy every day. He is a consistent human being on and off the field, and I love him. Greg, just how are you doing personally and physically after, I guess, the end of last year? I feel great. Feel great. Don't I look better? Yeah, you look great. You look I got a little sun. Yeah, I like that. Uh, no, I do. I, I feel great. Uh, I really do. Um, um, my kids are in great shape. Um, my son, my oldest son is doing a heck of a job. Uh, he lives in Knoxville. and I'll give a little shout out to Axel Logistics if I can. Uh, that's where he works. And uh, he's doing a heck of a job. So if anybody needs any logistical work, he, he's your man. And then uh, my son, who's uh, you know going into his fifth year there at uh, well, he's graduating here in May, and uh, he has another year of eligibility plus a red shirt if he needed it um, at East Tennessee. And and then my daughter now is uh, back at the University of Tennessee, and and uh, she's a UDA instructor plus going to college and doing a lot of cool things in her life. And uh, super proud of them. And uh, but I feel great. I really do. I really do. I have, I'm having fun. And uh, I like coaching these guys, and uh, it's been it's been a good spring so far. All right, thank you, guys.